it is a desire very clearly written in scripture that God will have all men to be saved. That means whoever participates in making contributions towards the salvation of men is satisfying a desire and a longing in the heart of God who will have all men to be saved. That is on one hand. And then for those who are now saved to come unto the knowledge of the truth. There are people who are saved, but in ignorance, they will not do much. Not for themselves, not for the kingdom. I have taught you that this kingdom is a kingdom that operates on the strength of light, the strength of knowledge. You can be saved. Salvation opens you up to the vast potentials that are captured in this Zoe life. But walking in the experience of it is knowledge dependent. Hallelujah. So, potentially speaking, the life we have received is a multifaceted um, expression of all the possibilities that are in Christ. But they will never find expression in my life and your life except and unless we have the requisite level of knowledge. And you see, knowledge in this kingdom is not freelanced. It has to be methodical. It has to be constructive. Are we together? Part knowledge here, another part here, a little, you know, misguided information here will not add up to an excelling life. You need to submit yourself to the whole counsel of God. That line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, you are learning the ways of God until you become mighty like the men of David. May that be your testimony. In the name of Jesus. Is someone shouting a louder amen? amen. And one of the reasons why we were given the Holy Ghost is to help us the Holy Spirit is our guarantee that we can step into the fullness of the knowledge it takes to reveal Jesus through our lives and to excel. 1 Corinthians 2, we read verse 9 and 10. Let's look at 11 and 12. The Bible says, verse 11, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? It says, Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Let's read verse 12 together. One to read. It says, Now we have received, uh -huh, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So one of the major assignments of the Holy Spirit is to come to us and become to us the revealer of the ways of God, the revealer of the mysteries of the kingdom, the revealer of the secrets of God, the revealer of the path that leads to an excelling life, a life of victory here and now. You can waste the ministry of the Spirit by just believing He's in your life just to make you feel spiritual and not maximize the potential. Most people are underutilizing the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. They will tell you they are filled with the Holy Ghost. They will pray in tongues, but their lives are surrounded by all kinds of foolish decisions and it is clear that the Holy Spirit has no hand in that kind of life of decadence and perpetual decline because when the Holy Spirit comes, He truly makes you a winner. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? You can give me a phone or you can even give me some money and I can sit back there and not maximize those privileges either because of ignorance or whatever it is. Now that does not stop the fact that you gave me something that has the potential to bless, to lift. But whether I can use it to my advantage or not is a different thing altogether. So most people have received the Holy Spirit and we just end at the realm of feeling spiritual. Oh, I have the Holy Ghost. I can even pray in tongues to prove it. But we cannot see the benefit of his person in your life. There should be a remarkable difference. Please look up. The former you, the current you, 
and the future you should be clearly different as proof that the Holy Spirit has come to assist you. Are we together? Did the Bible not say two are better than one? That means my life alone without his assistance, now that he has come into my life, your life should not be the same at all. Our precious people sang it very powerfully. The Holy Spirit is that engracing that comes from God. The added advantage, the advantage, when he comes upon your life, your background no longer matters. When he comes upon your life, the limitations past do not matter again. I hope you believe this. This is very powerful. Everywhere that I go, everything that I do, all I see is grace. Everywhere that I go, everything that I do, Your life becomes a living epistle. Your life becomes a discussion unto the glory of God. That when people look at your life, they know that a normal human being unassisted by heaven, unassisted by the realm of the spirit, cannot produce this kind of result. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night in John chapter 3 and verse 1 and he says rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from God verse 2 says for no man can do these things except God be with him there are results that cannot happen just by the strength of the flesh hallelujah I'm praying for you that from tonight the excellency of your results will clearly show that God is with you. Yeah. But not just that he's with you, that he's truly the one leading you. Yeah. It is all right for people to not believe you when you say God is leading me. But the end of your journey will show that he's the one who led you to Abuja. That he's the one who brought you here. That he's the one helping you understand his ways. In the name of Jesus Christ. And up front, let me encourage someone. Look up, please. It takes time for the excellency of the spirit life to manifest. Be patient. God is walking. We live in a world where we want to rush everything, you know. And you just want, I'm born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. What do I need to know? I want to start seeing results immediately. Be patient. Only a foolish farmer will go and put a seed on the ground are we together and by the next day he goes back there and he's angry at the farm I thought you are supposed to be a you know well fertilized farm you be patient sometimes you just need to do what you are doing you don't need to do anything new just be consistent it says let us not be weary in well-doing for we will reap in due season if we faint not we will reap in due season Yours is to continue the prayer, continue the word study, continue submitting yourself to growth. One day, like a baby transiting into a teenager, there are things that begin to happen in your life that tells you that a season is changing. Am I right on that? Yes. What does a baby do to become a higher version of itself? What does a young boy do to become a teenager? What does a teenager do to become an adolescent? What does an adolescent do to become an adult? What does an adult do to become an elderly person? That is the law of growth. Consistency is what is common to all of them. If a baby takes one drum of breast milk, it does not turn him into an adult. He just becomes a healthy baby. He will still be a baby. If an adult starves himself to death, he does not become a child. He only becomes a malnourished adult. There are certain things that subscribe to the law of process. Yours is to continue. It may not look like it, but the Bible says, Now are we the sons of God. It says it does not yet appear. From that one room, keep loving Jesus. From that one room, keep serving Jesus. From that one room, let your mind keep dreaming with the Spirit. Sooner or later, you will turn back and look for your former self and not find it again. Did the Bible not say why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen? For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. 
but the things that are unseen are eternal hallelujah so be patient with yourself don't allow the devil who is the master of the sense realm to make you feel this pursuit of God, this investment in prayer, this investment in the study of God's word, this giving, all of these practices, they don't seem to be yielding result. Till now, I do not have a job. Till now, I do not have this and that. Make up your mind that you will weary that voice of doubt and remain consistent, knowing that God has sworn by the oath and the promise that by these two immutable things, hear me, it is impossible for God to lie. And the way the realm of the spirit works is even 24 hours to your new season, it will not look like it. One more bath to turn a man to become a complete man, he was still looking leprous. One more night for the prisoner to become a prime minister, he was still looking like an ordinary person. The same way someone is seated here. Who knows, maybe this is your last night in that realm. Who knows, maybe this is your last night in that dimension. You will wake up and through the law of consistency, you would have evolved to a dimension of you that will become a marvel to the world. I speak it to someone in the name of Jesus Christ. The staying power, the grace to stay and to remain until you evolve. The grace to stay and remain until the word works in your life. The grace to stay and remain. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. It is not in starting, even failure start. It is champions that remain until they finish. When you watch a marathon, all kinds of people are there ready to start. Even those who already know, they will not finish. And once they shoot the gun or blow the whistle, everyone is running. And some are just whiling away time whereas you can see some people you can almost suspect that they will be the winners because their determination is so palpable you will know that from the start they were prepared to weary tiredness until they got to the finish line may you be that kind of person refuse to give up every time you are tempted to give up listen remember all those who are connected to your destiny every time you're tempted to give up remember the fact that god is counting on you to be the person who will end certain circles and let that motivate you and support your staying power to remain until you emerge but one guarantee i can give you by the integrity of scripture is that nobody who submits himself to the ministry of the word, the ministry of prayer, you are methodically taught the ways of God alongside the engracing that empowers you to walk in keeping with what you know. It is impossible to remain a failure. We are not the first to do this. This is not an invention. It's a relay. Others ran this race with excellence and they handed the baton to us. The Bible says, listen carefully, to follow them who through faith and patience. You're not the first to rise from failure to success. You're not the first to receive restoration from a, you know, whatever it is. Everything that is happening to you now is only a repetition of something that has happened before. The Bible says the thing that was is the thing that it that is and is that which is to come. We learn scripture because we find our experiences in scripture alongside the pathway that leads us to victory. It says, now thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph.